What's up, Three Black Guys with the Mike fam? We want to be able to share this show with as many people as possible. And you can help us out. Just go to our YouTube channel and click the subscribe button for new episodes on the podcast. Plus, share this episode or past episodes with as many people as you can on your own social media platforms. Also, be sure to rate and review us on iTunes or wherever you get this podcast. This is how we're able to grow the podcast and let more people hear it. So we appreciate the help. Thank you. And now, let's start the show. Oh, 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 my gracious. It's three black guys on the mic. I'm your one of the hosts, Maynard Scales, the suburban black I have with me today. My main man, hype voice, Spud. And wait a minute. Let me do this correctly because he will <laughs> definitely give me. He don't give Spud no grief, but me, I get grief. The man, the myth, the legend, Lamont G. Hayes. Hayes, Hayes, Hayes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, I thought we discussed air horn. No, oh, 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 you, oh, no, oh, hold on. You, you, you need your horn, right? My bad, my bad. Yeah, there you go. There we go. There we go. There we go. Let's get into it. What's going on with the with the fellas? Happy pandemic. I hope your quarantine is going well. Um, you know what? I just can I just start off by saying, I'm tired. What you talking you know, about, this, Spud? This quarantine. Listen, man, it's too much happening on the social media platforms. Everybody needs a little bit of a break from the social media platforms. All of the damn, you know, the the battles and the the DJ quarantine parties and Diddy is all in D nicest quarantine party drunk sending drunk text messages. Everybody need to sit down for a day. We need a social media break. It's too many challenges out here. Now Drake got a brand new uh, 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 challenge happening. It's too much going on. Everybody needs to just take a break from social media. I'm getting a little tired of scrolling through my feed and seeing unnecessary drama on my feed. That's all I got to say. Um, you, you, you sound old man, son. I am. I am, man. I am. This is stupid. There's too much going on. We need a break. Or maybe we don't need a break. Because you you all obviously sound like we don't need a break. I, I, listen, listen. I, I'm, I'm just glad you said it because when I say certain things, I'm hating. And I think just like anything else, you know, it's you're right. It's just, it's just too much. Anytime you go on Instagram and everyone's live, everyone, everyone, everyone's everyone live. is live. I, j- I just put it back down and I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to turn the TV off, you know, because the daily briefings like that's nothing that's a little too much. That's actually the most entertaining thing that's happening on TV. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, no, well, here's the deal. I, I want my briefing to be informative. So, I, you know, when Cuomo's down, I'm, I'm cool. And, and our governor, Governor Murphy of New Jersey, I'm down. But when when Donald and his crew. And Fauci isn't up on the stage. I'm like, yo, dog, I just, I, I turn it off. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? Because one minute, you wear the mask. Next minute, you can't wear the mask. Then you're supposed to do this, and then you can't do that. And I, and I will say this about masks, because we had an issue in my home about the mask. But when the Surgeon General said one of the things that he said about the mask, he said it's, main, it's mainly about you, even if you are not symptomatic, that you're not giving the virus to someone else. And I'm like, you know what? That makes a little sense. But again, the homemade mask, as I saw something on social media, this made sense of a guy in Paris who shows, you know, when you put a stock, I mean, a sock or a stocking or something around your mouth, shit, the particles are going through that too. So it's really not doing anything. So it's just, it's just a whole lot of misinformation out here. But I'm with you. It's too much. It's too much. Yeah, well, man, you got to put the TV down for a second, too. Yeah. You know, I, I feel you on that. Yesterday, I'm sorry to cut you off, man. But the other day, I, when I when I watched the, the briefing, I was like, you know what? I'm turning the TV off. I'm turning the social media off. I'm going to give me some whiskey. I'm going to sit my ass outside. And I'm going to quarantine. And I'm going to leave everybody alone. Because this is too much information, too much happening. You know, that, you bring up a good point. You know, um, 
getting outside obviously is important. And I, you know, I thought about this, and there's some things that I, when I was going in my own backyard and found out that some da- somebody's damn dog shit in my yard. I don't even know how they got through my fence, but okay, whatever. You went, you went in your, uh, you went in your uh, backyard. And you told your neighbors, you said, hey, y'all want to see a dead body? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But, you know, now is really an important time. Just as a reminder, and I'm going to be my nerd self for a second just to let y'all know. As a reminder, it's time for you to to do some things while you're in in quarantine to make your outside and your inside better. Obviously, this is a great time to do some spring cleaning. It's springtime. But also to do some spring cleaning outside. The last thing you want to do is like try to get your fresh air and be outside and be chased away by a bunch of mosquitoes or pests or whatever. And you know, so turn over those water, the, all those things that might hold water in your backyard, um, and, and get rid of that because all that does is just grow a bunch of mosquitoes and stuff. So, Can I ask you a question, man? Yes, what sir. do you say to all of the thousands of people that are stuck in their apartment buildings singing "Juicy"? It was all a dream in Brooklyn. You know, those who don't have backyard. <laughs> yeah, then, you know, I mean, uh, do do some other type of spring cleaning when you when you know, when you get to that point where you don't know what else to do. Like, yo, know, change the, the battery in your um smoke detectors. Um, you know, get rid of old clothes and things that you don't need. Purge Maynard, a little Maynard, bit. Maynard, I, I am utterly i I'm utterly offended. Why would you be I'm offended? Utterly offended because what you're trying to do is A, you're trying to put Mr. Stubbs out of business, okay? That's Mr. Stubbs' job in my house. Mr. Really Stubbs is, does that? Let me tell yes, you something. And, Yo, no, no, no. Wait, wait. wait. Mr. Stubbs? No, that's my guy. Like, when there's an issue, and you can ask my wife or anybody that's in our area, you call Mr. Stubbs. He, hits, he hit his line. He's in route. He leaves you a little note how much money to leave in an envelope, and that keeps the economic engine moving. And what you're not going to do, Maynard, is tell me to go outside and do manual labor in the yard, we don't oh, do that. That's yeah, what's wrong with us. Is, I know, right? That's, <laughs> that's what's wrong with us. We need to. Yeah, we need to do manual. Le- but wait, are you letting Mr. Stubbs in your house at this point? No, no, no. We we've left a couple of times that he came in, and then you know. But you still of... letting him in your house? He might right. be leaving the virus yeah. on surfaces. He might be leaving <laughs> he might... on your smoke detector. He might yeah, be see, coughing on you on your TV see, remotes and stuff. But here's the deal. Here's... He might be taking a shit in your bathroom. Whoa, here's the whoa, deal. Wait a minute. Mr. Stubbs is definitely <laughs> taking a shit in your bathroom. <laughs> No, but then after that, there's a cleaning crew that comes in and they do what they need to say. Wait a minute. But you know what? You're just doing too much. Let me tell you. Let me. Yeah, you got a cleaning crew coming in your crib and Mr. Stubbs. Everybody's in the refrigerator. Everybody is taking a pump. (laughs) Yo, they messing around. You know what I'm saying? No wonder you out of kettle one already. They probably doing a fake. Look, we need to be logging on. They probably doing a Facebook party from Lamont's crib. (laughs) 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 They They spit around. That's the reason why the internet is slow right, right now. Right, right, right. The right, right. Mr. Stubbs is pulling out his Serato mixtapes and shit, and he's just getting it on over there. So listen, before I get in trouble, we are social distancing, but we have had a couple of instances where we had to have have the crew come in and kind of do what they do. So all I'm saying is, and I do think that's good information, man. I, I do think, you know, not just that, just on so many different levels, since we do have this time. And I also think what's important, I know a lot of people are getting, which is called rest. And I do think that that's important as well, because a lot of people in our community, we believe that, what what is it, that that sleep is the enemy of death? Something something retarded. Sleep is the closest thing to death. Yeah, and I'm like, that's dumb, because any medical doctor will tell you, you need to get your rest. You know what I mean? You need to eat your vegetables and get some sleep. So hopefully people are getting that done as well instead of, you know, ripping and running and doing a lot of things that we're all on this podcast and people who listen to this podcast are guilty of. So, no, man, I I do think you're right, but I'm I'm not cutting any grass or going in the yard and turning anything over about mosquitoes. I don't do that. I think we should also, you know, before we go to the next topic, I mean, I, I think that we all should also take this time to do something productive. All of the things that you wanted to do that you never have the opportunity to do, whether it be learn a new skill or, you know what I'm saying, learn another language or, you know, like Maynard said, you know, just clean up your house or whatever. Use this time to also be productive. I mean, I understand that, you know, this is a chance for all of us to be able to get some rest and just kind of just chill and digress from, you know, the day-to-day life. But I was listening to somebody today, you know, um, where they were just saying, like, we all had an issue with work. 
right? Where everybody was like complaining about their jobs. Oh my God, I can't believe I got to get up and go to work. Oh my God, I can't believe it. You know what I'm saying? I can't, you know, I, I got to go and do is, you know, hear my boss again. And now we're, most people are wishing that they would, you know, could go to work. But I think that, you know, it also is important for us to be productive during this time. We should come out of this situation in the next 60 to 90 days with new skills, with new information, with just learning, reading new books, you know, educating yourself. Don't just be sitting there and just be on, you know, social media watching, you know, uh, the versus battles every single day and listening to D-Nice's, you know, quarantine party every day. You got to get up and do something with yourself and, you know, learn something. Do be productive during this time. So I just wanted to just kind of put my little two cents in that joint. Uh, Spud said there's going to be a test at the end of this. So y'all need to get your shit is. together. Yeah, you know, I'm sorry. Because <clears throat> I, I was talking to Al Nuke yesterday and he was saying, you know, we had this big debate about, you know, he, Trump was right and, you know, he was saying that, you know, Trump is right for kind of, you know, making sure that or, or trying to get the economy back open and, you know, all this other stuff and 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 he was saying, Spoil, what would you do? Anyways, to, to round it up, he was just saying that, that black folks is, you know, going to be the one that's hit hard. And I said, you know, on the next podcast that you do, you need to be, be be trying to tell your listeners that this is the time for you to learn. I mean, to, you know what I'm saying, try to create some sort of revenue stream, you know, because he was saying that the last time that we went through a recession that, um, you know, Uber came out of it, and Uber Eats came out of it and all these, you know, fantastic businesses. And but unfortunately, black folks did not come up with any amazing businesses during the last recession. And so this is the opportunity for us to be able to hone in on our skills and create those revenue, you know, sources for the next time so that we can learn how to be recession proof in the future. But anyways, Bill Withers. Bill Withers. One of the best to ever do it, man. Bill Withers, uh, unfortunately passed away this past uh, week. You know, um, he, I would say, and I, you know, I loved Bill Withers music, right? Grandma's hands is one of Grandma. my favorites. Man. You know, I was a lovely day. Use me up, etc. Uh, um, lean on, lean on me. Huge song, um, and and it was a resurgence. I think, at least for me, to and be reminded is when the Black Godfather came out on Netflix. You know, he was so um, critical in Bill Withers' career. So, you know, shout out to uh, the the Bill Withers family. You know, with respect and, and condolences, Lamont. What you what you got on it, man? Well, I'm actually, I'm just glad you said that about, um, you know, all those old songs are big and, and the whole shebang, but I think the story behind Bill Withers is super cool. And, you know, for those who haven't seen The Black Godfather, you definitely need to check it out on Netflix um, because it gives a little bit of an insight on his actual story. You know, him being a military man, him being a, was it in a military airplane mechanic? I think it he was. was a, he was an airplane mechanic. I yeah, mean. I think he even talked about how he went on and... Um, he did some uh, plumbing work, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, just a all around like regular dude that you know that made these songs that became these these monster hits. You know what I mean? And it's like it's super cool for me because it just shows that you can still be just like a regular guy that you know does regular stuff and and, and be a black father, which we're going to talk to when we get to my segment. And, you know, not run around in a dress and be on some clown buffoonery and still get it done. You know what I mean? So, you know, shout to Bill and, you know, to the triple OG Clarence Avon for seeing and understanding, you know, what Bill was about and how important he was, because even though Bill created those wonderful, masterful songs, he need, definitely needed help, you know, in order to get that to, to the point to where we're, we're, we're honoring his passing today. So I always tell people it's, it's always about the artist, but you got to remember it's about the people around the artist that help, you know, elevate that. That's like a little selfish plug on my part too, but that's the realness of it. You know what I mean? So, you know, shout to Bill. Spud, any more on that? No, I mean, I, I, I echo everything that you guys are saying. You know, it really is, and I'm sure Lamont can echo this, it, for for art for an artist to be able to have timeless music, timeless. that is an extreme, I mean, you know, that's an, extreme, that's an accomplishment everybody wants. And, you know, we all will forever sing Grandma's Hands, you know, Lovely Day. I mean, these songs will go on until the end of time. And I I, I mean, R.I.P. Bill Withers, man, you know. And even, you know, even with the Black Godfather. I mean, he rolled with Clarence Avon during Clarence Avon's, like, struggling days. Right. So he was with, you know, with Clarence Avon through the, through the thick and the thin of it. And, and that just goes to show 
his character, not just, you know, like Lamont was saying, not just as an artist, but as a man, you know, and as a person, you know, that that is important. And, 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 and I think it's kind of hard to say that, um, you know, to some of these artists nowadays. Oh man, so that's that's big. I I I love Bill Withers, and I, both of you guys also love this music and loved and, and honor the man. So, R.I.P. Bill Withers, and uh, condolences to the family. So, moving on, Teddy Riley versus Babyface in the head-to-head -head battle. What y'all got? Well, first of all, let's cancel. Let's let's be clear. Um, it's not canceled. It's postponed. Well, I, it's postponed. canceled to me. You know, and you know, I'm gonna be honest with you. When I first saw it, I was like, "Kenny's gonna get on Instagram." <laughs> Why? <laughs> right, right, right. Right. I, I was like, ah, and I'm with you, Kenny. But I think part of your mystique is that you know you don't got to be careful here. You don't stoop down and try to do something that's kind of not on your caliber or legacy level. So I kind of personally had an issue with that. I can see Teddy, but not Kenny. I, I just, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if I want, if I want that. I'm good. I understand it. I know we're trying to give people something to do. You know, I understand, you know, Swiss and, and, uh, and Timbo, you know, it's all about, propping up the platform to make Mark Zuckerberg more money. Yep, I'm hating. Yep, I'm hating. Yep, I'm hating. Um, but I don't know. I don't know if I want to see that, bro. I just don't. I'll pass. I don't want to see none of it. Mm. I mean, you know, no disrespect. I mean, you know, I know a lot of people did, like, um, you know, really like the Scott Storch and Manny Fresh. I didn't see um, um, Lil John and, and T-Pain. Um, a lot of people say the T-Pain won, but, I mean, I don't know if, I, I, I mean, I don't know. This, I agree and I disagree. To me, uh, Teddy Riley already wins. What? I don't think that, I don't think that Babyface has the caliber of music. He doesn't have what? the diversity, in my opinion, to beat Teddy Riley. That's right. just my opinion. He's right. Y'all tripping. Riley. Y'all tripping. I, I mean, it, it's mean, different. Maybe, it's there's different. There's no babyface record. There's no babyface uh, energetic record. Name an name energetic record that babyface has. Don't be cruel. Okay, I'll give you that. I'll give you Every that. Every little step. That's one. Okay, on that's your... one. You got to give me the, okay, you give me the Bobby Brown. But other than that, he does not have, he's um, not crossed uh, over into hip hop. He no. didn't cross over into R and B and pop and he did he did and all of those other things. His I R and B mean, his R and B joint is his R and B joint is bigger than Teddy's R and B joint. Look, the, the man did end of the road. Can we talk? My 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 with Johnny Gill. Love should have brought you home. I don't care with uh, Rex in effect, Rump Shaker, Trump, <laughs> all of them. No. We're not making love <laughs> by no, Drew Hill. Did he not say Rex in effect? That's whack. Shaker. That's whack. He did TLC, Rump baby, Rump baby, Rump baby. Baby, baby, baby. He, yo, I don't. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know. To me, Teddy Riley, you know, saying beats out baby face hands down. Mm. I, you know, uh, just to go back on one part of it. Teddy Riley with Guy is classic. That first and second Guy album, monster. The Black Street stuff for me it was good. It was excellent watch, stuff. Watch, listen, watch but yourself. It, watch, watch, that's fair. Watch yourself. Hold Be on. careful, man. Now, Be careful. now, what you don't know, what you don't know is the Black Street days. I was living here in, in Hampton Roads in college, and... There was a little life of Riley money floating around. You know, I was out trying to get the check off of that. Those were my days. But I just, I don't, I, I, the guy, Teddy Riley, that is the, per, that's the best of, to me, of Teddy Riley. Him with Guy. That's what, classic. But, okay. Y'all just don't see it that way. Y'all gonna learn. I don't. You going, you going to learn. You I mean, up. if we were going R&B for R&B, yeah, of course, I mean, you know, Babyface, but I just have not seen Babyface cross over, in my opinion. 
I don't know. Teddy Riley, I'm rocking out with Teddy Riley. I, I, I kind of am on the Lamont train on that one. I, I don't want to see baby faces old ass on Instagram. And, and you know what? On the quiet, and that's my other issue, like, with certain legend, legendary rap groups. Like, I don't want to see, you know, since we're talking about Teddy, you know what I mean? And, and I didn't notice as a child that, you know, he did a lot of Houdini records. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, actually, one of my favorite Big Daddy Kane records was done by Teddy Riley. But I don't want to get the see job a done. You talking about? Yeah, my... come on, dog. That was like, that was that was, that was dog. dog. Like that was a that was anyway. But I, I don't do want... Wild Wild West too. He did, he did Wild Wild, Wild West, West Kumo, Kumo D. D. Yeah, Kumo yeah so that's Wild what I'm saying. It's, I'm almost feeling like Teddy has a deeper catalog in terms of of generations that he's touched, even mm. to this day. Because I for, and I forgot what record it is. Is a record that Teddy? Oh, I think it was a. Uh, um, one of those records with the boy, the boy that I don't that I think is super whack. Um, uh, oh, wait a minute, uh, what's his name? Come on, Spud. Um, I don't even know the song uh, you're singing right now. <laughs> Chris <laughs> Brown. Wait, wait, wait. No, not Chris Brown. The other boy. Um, uh, the boy from Hawaii or whatever. That oh thinks he's yeah. Black. Oh, you're talking about hold up. Bruno Mars. Wait a minute. Bruno Mars. No, 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 so, Babyface is done. You you take almost all that those gold hits by Boys to Men, those platinum hits by Boys to Men. That's that's Babyface. You take the yeah. Tony Rich project, all that, all that um that uh Tony uh Braxton stuff, Whitney Houston stuff. That's I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, man. I'm going to sleep. Give me give me one second because right. you <laughs> you put me to sleep with all them. Right. No, and you... I'm with you. And I, I get it. I get, and my other issue with Babyface is that if you listen to Tender Lover, right, first first CD I bought when I was in college, when I had my Circuit City uh, credit card, and I bought my Bose speakers, and I bought, I was like, oh, let me get this CD, because CDs were pretty new back then. And you listen to all of those chords, the way that, that they go to that, and that's all he did is he just did gave that, all of his songs Yo, sound dude, the same, bro. Like, listen, listen, if you didn't get, if you were in college and you bought the Tender Lover joint and right. you didn't get nothing off of that whip appeal, you ain't getting, no, you hit that whip appeal? No, 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 oh, my dude. No, 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 oh, no, no. oh. Wait a minute, man. Wait a minute. Hold up. Be you got to be careful. Now. That whip appeal. This was, this was before I got married. So be clear. What does that have to do with anything? Why are you buying a baby face album? That's what I was. I was what? I are you was, kidding me? That, that Tender was, Lover album was. I got all. Ba- I got every baby face album. Baby face album. I'm disappointed in both of y'all for buying a baby face album. You crazy, you my dude. You, you crazy. Yeah, I want you to buy a hip hop record. Why you? Why you know what I'm saying? It takes a nation of millions to hold us back. I got that too. You got that, that too. You, I, you know what? You know what, Lamont. Lamont. Lamont this is this is how the east. This is the east coast versus west coast beef right there. You gotta you gotta pick one or the other. No, you buying a baby face? I'm disappointed that both of y'all. Baby face was banging, yo. You can't trip on baby face. Going to the record store buying baby face whip appeal. Get out of here. Yo, that whip appeal, that tender lover album, banging. Get out of here. All right, all right. So, so, what was the tape or the CD? This the tape. This the tape. I bought the CD. I bought the CD. I bought the CD. No, CDs wasn't popping when you was in college, were they? Yeah. Yes. Oh, no, yeah, well, you know, those, Lamont, he's I from Junction City. $20. No, 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 no. I, I mean, if CDs wasn't popping when I was... So, wait. So, so you spent $20. Back then, it's probably, what, $24.99? No, it was 19 dollars It was 19 or 15 okay, Yeah. So some 19, of them were, some of them were 15 dollars on a baby face whip appeal? On a Tinder Lover album? That joint was, Bro, that was a, on, that I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can I get the floor? Can I please get the floor? Yeah, please. dog. I'm please. A, I almost want to hang up on you. I mean, you I act like it wasn't, a, you act like it wasn't a platinum selling album. I'm not saying that. I'm not, I'm who, not did they, who do they, who do you think he sold those gentlemen. three, four million um, copies from? Gentlemen. A bunch of women. A bunch of gentlemen. women. A bunch of gentlemen. girls. Gentlemen. I would hope that it would have been a bunch of, now, I wouldn't have been mad it had you had been riding in a car with a broad and, I'm sorry, we can't broad? <laughs> okay, we gotta cut, cut his mic off. Lamont, go ahead. You have the floor. He's out here calling them broads. I just, I just want to go. I want to go back in time, okay? Because Maynard, the right. year remember the time he no. produced that song. I got you. The the year was 1989. Okay. Arsenio Hall was still on television. There still was this transition of cassettes and cassette singles that were going into CDs. 
if you were fly, you had a CD player in 1989. Truth. All hands down. You know what I'm saying? So, yes, we were buying CDs. And, again, we what you was only getting one or two because you only had a 30, 40, or 50 boy if you was doing a part-time job like I was doing in 1989 while still holding down my few little credits. And let's be clear. You were not having someone come to the dorm and playing a mil- – it takes a million – a nation of million to hold us back. You were putting on baby face, drinking Boom's Farm, or, or 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 whatever vodka that you could afford at the time. Yeah, yeah I you're had not hip hop. <clears throat> yo, I had the six disc. I had the I'm six disc carousel. Like, hip hop hard revolt. That's right, man. No, nope, you're right. You had the carousel. I had the carousel, right. and I had to get my. I had the baby face join in. I had like the Jodeci join in one of them. Come on, now. you know the Keith Sweat joint, the Bobby Come joint. On, you know, and then you had to make your little program. A pass on that one. You had to make baby your little face. program. No, you see, I'll give you a pass on that one. Baby face? Yo, man. It's the same baby thing, bro. It's, yo, you know what? Okay. Uh, look, Spud, we let's let's go, man. You you you, you subject, tripping. Next subject. Uh yo, Joe Biden needs to pick a VP. I mean, obviously the this whole thing is not over yet, but Joe Biden is likely going to become the Democratic um, nominee. And now it's time for us to discuss vice presidential candidates. Now, what Joe Biden said a couple of weeks ago is that he definitely would have a woman on his ticket. Who, Lamont, is that woman? You want to know the truth, Maynard? Yes, sir. I think just like, if I'm not mistaken, the deadline to the census just passed a couple days ago, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know if I care. I don't know if I care about the census. I don't know if I care about Joe Biden and who he's picking as we speak. I mean, we got people dying. And I know we're talking about that. We're going to hit it again. But I think that's going to play a major role in what happens in November. I don't think anybody cares. Hmm. I'm gonna keep it a buck. I, I I think you know. You don't think leadership matters? I mean, you know, well, you're ta- you well, mentioned be, that people well, I'll, are dying. I'll be, I'll be I'll be honest with you. I think that this is just another example on a federal, state, and a local level where leadership is 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 failing all the way around. I'm gonna keep it a buck. I, I had a conversation with somebody the other day. It was like. This person felt like, like, yo, Lamont, like, do you think it would be any better if Joe Biden was in the seat? Or even, hell, even Barack Obama was in the seat right now? And I said, well, I don't know. That's a, I think at least Barack's delivery would be different. He was like, so Lamont, like, we're on some old every man for themselves right now. Like, we don't know what to do. And again, I'm just bringing all of that up because I think it matters when it comes to the Joe Biden conversation. And what is more terrifying than COVID-19 is that there's still a large contingency in this country that think that Donald Trump is doing his job. Shout to my man Bill Maher, because even though he had a whack-ass show on Friday where he was taping from his home, his content was still amazing. And this is one of the things that he said, is that any president who is in an environment of a warlike environment normally gets a bump in their approval rating, which makes no sense. Like he talked about George W., 9-11, when he's sitting there reading a book. And he didn't, you know, spring into action and other uh, methods of his way of handling it were questionable. He got a bump. Donald's get got a bump. I feel like Joe is coming from behind the eight ball, playboy. So okay, I mean, unless okay. he bringing Jesus, I, I, I don't know. I don't think anybody cares. Spud, do you think Joe is 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 being wild, mad, disrespectful to Bernie Sanders when he tells him, "Look, man, I'm just gonna go ahead and move forward with finding my VP in my cabinet." I think so. I, I think that in the in where we are, where the the landscape is, I think that, and I think we all would agree if we believe, or if the energy, if, if there was some sort of energy behind Bernie Sanders right now, I think that it would be disrespectful. But I think right now, everything is leaning towards Joe Biden, delegate wise, you know, energy wise, um, country wise. So I think that I don't think that he's disrespectful in that way. Let me just say why I, I kind of slightly disagree with Lamont. I think that right now, Joe Biden's pick for VP is extremely important because I think that the country is looking for somebody who can beat Donald Trump. That was the entire narrative during the 
whatever this primary season is. You know, that's what all of the um, news outlets are talking about. Everybody's looking for. So that's the number one thing that people are voting for. Who can beat Donald Trump? And I think that the vice president pick is important. So I think people do care because without that, then there is it. If he picks, I don't know, let's just say Amy Klobuchar. Do I think they, you know what I'm saying? Amy Klobuchar, is, do I want to see an Amy Klobuchar, Joe Biden ticket? Do I want to see a Joe Biden, Kamala Harris ticket? Do right you? now, I wouldn't mind, you know what I'm saying? No. I, right now, I wouldn't mind seeing, because I saw this on the news, I mean, uh, in the, in the, in the, in the, uh, a couple of news stories today. Right now, I would not mind seeing a Biden Cuomo ticket. That, that I'm putting, I'm, I'm, I'm going to campaign for that ticket right there. But if he's going to stay with women... I don't know, out of the women that, you know what I'm saying, that I have seen, Kamala Harris, Klobuchar, um, what's the girl out of Atlanta? Um, Stacey Abrams. Abrams, um, Governor Whitmer. Um, there was a couple of them, you know. Uh, uh, though I forgot the other one. But Hillary Clinton? No, absolutely not. That that one's, I'm, I'm not even, I'm not voting for that. No matter how, I don't, that, 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 that would make me not even want to go to the poll. At all, mm. I don't. I don't want to see that ticket at all. But I, I think that whoever he decides, that is going to be extremely important for. Is that a team that is going to be able to beat? That is going to rally people enough to be able to go to the polls to beat Donald Trump in November, especially to your point, Lamont, during this time of COVID nineteen. Because right now. Shoot, because who, who's doing uh, Minnesota is still doing their um, primary Tuesday? They're like, I don't, even, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> we still going to the poll. That's right. You know, so, I mean, I, I think it's important for that, that combination and the energy is extremely important because that is what's going to beat Donald Trump. And if he picks the wrong person, a no name, or somebody that we don't really know, somebody who doesn't have the experience or somebody who is not as tough because both of them together is going to have to be, you know what I'm saying, tougher than Donald Trump. So that's just my thoughts. Okay. Well, let's let's do this real quick. Let's pay some bills, and then when we come back, we're going to find out what Lamont happens to be in his feelings about this week. This is Three Black Guys with a Mic. This episode of Three Black Guys with a Mic is brought to you by BWPMarketing.com. Rappers, singers, and professional musicians, let BWP Marketing take your music career to the next level. BWP Marketing is a full-service marketing agency with over 20 years of experience in the music business. Bottom line, BWP Marketing makes it happen. No runaround, no drama, just results. Do you need help getting your music heard on iTunes, Spotify, or Tidal? Do you need your music on radio? Plus, we can help maximize your social media presence and create a customized digital plan just for you. BWP Marketing has helped artists such as Yo Gotti, Summer Walker, Roddy Rich, and the legendary Mary J. Blige and Tony Braxton. And now we're ready to help you. Go to www.bwpmarketing.com and get more information. Then click on the contact page and in the subject line, type three black guys, and we will send you a free BWP Marketing Artist Worksheet. This detailed sheet shows you 45 ways how you, as an artist, should be generating income with your music. Take your music career to the next level with BWP Marketing. That's BWPMarketing.com. And now, back to the show. All right. So th first, let me just, I think it's important that we thank um, that sponsor. Lamont, um, you, would you pass uh, that on to BWP Marketing that we thank them? I shall, I shall, I shall. <laughs> <laughs> I shall. Uh, the only thing is, I don't know if that sponsorship is going to go through next week because the check has yet to clear. But uh, I'm certain that we'll, we'll just, work it out. Can you cash app that to me or what? Well, you know what? We don't you do cash app. You know what I mean? Like, that's my other Like, who, who said the cash app was the thing, bro? Like, Cash App is really, working, my dude. It's working. I know, but can, but can I? Can I? But my here's my issue with Cash App. Uh, right? Hold on. Are you are you are you in your feelings now? Are you gonna go no, in your feelings? No, no, on no, 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 no. I need my. I need to reclaim all my time. Okay. I got a lot on my mind. Go ahead. But but like Cash App is like, 
it has like a monetary limit. You know what I mean? It's like you try to do X, Y, and Z, and they're like, ah, you're doing too much. You know what I'm saying? And I get it. If it's $100 or, a, you know, but sometimes if you got to do X, Y, and Z, it's not like a real banking institution, and that's kind of my beef with Cash App. You know what I'm saying? Okay. No beef over here, because plenty of my clients have paid me through Cash App, and we don't have no problems. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Spud, you want to get that Cash out, Cash App out real quick? <laughs> hey, Cash App me, boy. If you want to put some shmoney in my bank account, I'll take it. <laughs> and maybe I need to work with it a little bit more, but I had an issue, and let me like, tell you, well, what? let me tell you something, Lamar. I bet you, Mr. Stubbs, don't mind some Cash App. Oh, no, no, no. It's funny you say that because he was. <laughs> he, like, he, yeah, we'll, we'll take Cash App. <laughs> Mr. Yeah, Stubbs, yeah, is, so he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what's what you in your feelings about this week, my man? Hey, man, you know, actually, you know, sometimes in my, in my feelings can be good or, you know, it could be bad. So, this week, I'm really on the good side of being in my feelings about Courtney Vance. His name is Courtney Vance. You know who that is, Spud? Yeah, that's um, Angela Bassett's husband. Absolutely. Courtney. And I don't like him for that. I can't stand him for that. What do you mean? And I, that's why I want you to just, just, just relax. Hold oh, my on. Bad. Let me get this, I, me get this I was out. in my feelings a little out. bit because I got a thing for her. But go ahead. So, Courtney B. Vance. I don't know what the B stands for. And and if you guys didn't know, he is a um, native Detroiter, born and raised, proudly waves the flag. So, so anytime, you know, when there's somebody that's from the D-Town... <laughs> And what I'm really in my feelings about with this brother, and it's not with Angela, but, you know, during this COVID-19, we've been having the Netflix and do the whole shebang. And I had an opportunity to watch Uncorked, Mm -hmm. starring, I forgot the young African brother who's like the lead and Courtney's in there. And Mm -hmm. um, the other lady that I'm calling the new the new mother of all black movies, uh, Lisa Nash, Nash, Mm -hmm. who did a great job. But I'm just really in my feelings because I really enjoyed that Netflix piece. And part of it was because of Courtney. And the reason why I say that is because he was like, you know, my wife, she she, she kind of teased me, said, oh, there you go, watching those old black family movies. And I'm like, yeah, because you had a black father, a black entrepreneur, a black husband, a black man that even, you know, when his wife passed on, if you didn't see it, it's okay. He still was like a father to his family. He had that kind of spoiler tough alert, experience. Spoiler alert. Oh, right. Shit, if they ain't watching it by now, the hell with him. But I, I'm just saying, like, it was just so refreshing not to see somebody in a dress or to even see the lead uh, guy, the young man. I forget his name. Mama, and I look it up. Uh, uh, well, his, the actor's name is Mum. Mamadou Afi, but his his character's name is um Elijah. Elijah, okay, yeah. Even Elijah, that character, it was just refreshing. This guy, young kid, ended up with a young black girlfriend. They had like a little young, tasteful sex scene. I was like, yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Is you, that the you, part you really your no, feelings no, about? No, it's no, a no, young, really tasteful. <laughs> you know, really <laughs> tasteful. <laughs> young, <laughs> tasteful. Young, <laughs> tasteful. Yeah, I mean. You, you saw the young brother, he trying to excel. You you, to, you saw the dynamic between him and his family of, you know, his family wanted him to inherit a family business, which is big. You know what I'm saying? That in itself. But he had to try to explain to his family, yo, I want to do this. I want to be able to further my education, this whole wine thing. I mean, like this shit to me just hit all the buttons of being like on some proud black shit, and I'll say it again, without somebody in a dress, without two men on here kissing, without, you know, some old clownery, buffoonery type of shit. Now, the writing could have been better, but... I thought I'd say all that to say. <laughs> I say all that to say. <laughs> you got to watch this. Like, you really got to just take in some of this energy, again, other than some man wearing a dress or two men in the bed or just it's just it's just some good energy man it just it just made me feel all warm inside and to see one of the homeboys who didn't die who wasn't like on drugs and he was in the movie from the beginning to the end which was the black father okay. to me I'm in my feelings about that cuz that's some dope shit mm-hmm. one time for that 
I feel you. I thought the movie was. I thought it was great. I liked it, and I, I, didn't I haven't think seen the, it yet. It's good. I didn't think that the writing was bad. I thought the writing was 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 decent. I felt like the acting was good, and you know, I I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed every little bit of it. So, I agree with you on one thing, Lamont. It was cool to not to a yes. It was a young, tasteful sex scene. Thank you. I appreciate you uh, pointing that out. Um, but. Wait, wait, wait! I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And, and I probably should have added on. It was a young, it was a tasteful sex scene between a man and a woman. I think we kind of understood a, that. A, 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 I just want to make sure. No, no, you got to be clear now because it's 2020 out here. Why, you you have, what wait, but do you have a problem with a man and a man having a tasteful sex scene? No, well, here's what I. No, here, here's the deal. Is that here's what I have a problem with. Oof. I have a I have a problem with balance. And in my opinion. A lot of the content that I've consumed over the, oh, during this um, quarantine, there hasn't been enough balance of a man, a black man, and a black woman in a sex scene that I've consumed on Netflix. Something's wrong with your algorithm, but that's a whole other thing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're searching for. Right, right. <laughs> We're going to have to take a look at your search terms. <laughs> you're right. You streamed uh, the Tiger King for too long. Right, brother. right, right, right. right. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. You know All right. right. Touche, you got me, but, 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 I, but again... And the world didn't know that when you hit Tiger King, you didn't really know that's what you was going to get. No, 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 definitely no. not. <laughs> All right, let's get back into it, man. Um, we got to talk about something that this this COVID virus is, is seemingly uncovering. And I think these issues kind of kind of meld together. Um, uh, Black Enterprise was able to demonstrate that from 2013 to 2018, that Black um, African-American families are, in fact, um, poor. Maybe our unemployment rate has dropped, but um, our race to uh, achieve wealth uh, has not. Um, also, that the COVID-19 has exposed that poverty uh, and and, and uh, poorness or in black communities. For some reason, um, there's a spike in how our community um, is being impacted by the virus on, on not only cases, but also deaths. And then lastly, you know, I want to kind of wrap in the idea that uh, because we all in this quarantine thing, maybe we got a little domestic violence problem that seems to be spiking. I think it's up something like 45 percent or something along those those numbers. Right. So, you know, Spud, you if let me just let you know before you say anything, Spud, this is a safe place. So, you know, if Mrs. Spud is beating you, you can tell us. Uh, yeah, we had that before, you know what I'm saying, the virus started, but, you know, it's all right. Um, you know, no, you know, and these are three separate, you know what I'm saying, issues, right? And so I, I, I'm, I'm very curious to know why aren't African Americans move? And, 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 and I, the, the, the answer is obvious. It's subjective, but it's, it's obvious, right? But it's amazing to me to be able to see that Despite that, we are still getting we're getting college degrees. Right. Women, especially, are you know what I'm saying at the top of you know their game when it comes to education, and we are still lacking in financial gratification or moving the needle when it comes to generational wealth or either wealth period. And a lot of it has to do with you know. When, when, and you guys can, I'm sure, you know what I'm saying, kind of attest this. You guys, you know what I'm saying, maybe you have a master's, Lamont, you know what I'm saying, you, you, you're you from college. And, and, and when in an article it said that because a lot of, and even there's, there's also a thing on Netflix that talks about money and, and generational wealth, but especially for black folks, when you become like the breadwinner or the person that, you know, has the most money in your family, then you're usually the one that's giving it out to other people. You know, you're usually the one that your family members are coming to for loans and, you know, coming to for, you know, what I'm saying, extra help and so forth and so on. And that's one of the reasons why it's difficult for us to be able to get to the next level. But also just because, you know, what I'm saying of our, just the color of our skin, we still live in a time where we cannot get jobs despite the education that we have. True. And to me, that is that is really unfortunate. And until you know, when I said earlier, this is the time for us to be able to really start to 
figure out how can I take advantage of my entrepreneurial skills? Even if you don't have any, how can I learn how to be able to create some sort of wealth in this situation? And to the second part of it, because, you know, this is home with all three of us because we all lived in Detroit. Lamont is from Detroit, you know, about Detroit being one of the hot spots and one of the unfortunate cases for COVID-19. And not just in Detroit, but in poor areas, you know, in rural areas as well, because one of the lack of the money. Two, because of the underlying health issues, diabetes, heart disease, and so forth and so on. And because we just do not have the resources to be able to either go to the doctor or go to, you know, um, or either have insurance or, you know, whatever the case may be. And these things are just really bothersome to me. And I don't want to say it because I don't want, to, want this to sound negative, you know, like, oh, we got to do better. But... I say this with, you know, with love and respect and no disrespect or not trying to be insensitive at all, but I just wanted to just open the floor to see, man, how can we do better? Hmm. Well, I think <clears throat> not necessarily trying to answer that piece, but just to, to kind of echo some of what you said, you know, I, one of the things that the Black Enterprise article said about um, this wealth attainment or the, or the idea that we're poor is that, yes, you're right, we are achieving um, uh, education, we are converting on um, educational growth, but with that educational growth by way of college, also come this student loan debt. And then, right. then if you start looking at, you know, places where black people live, right, where we are, where we have um, um, high populations of African Americans, they're going to be the urban cities, but largely Los Angeles and Chicago and New York and Philadelphia, Atlanta, etc. And um, we happen to live in some of the most expensive um, cities, if you will. New York City is something like, you know, seventy percent of New York City are, are renters, uh, and you have to be in a rent-controlled building. If you don't, you could find yourself paying, you know, enormous amounts. And then we're the and and that and so now you're giving away money to a landlord who and you're not earning any equity or any value uh, that you can pass on, but you can in fact pass on your rent controlled property, which you know isn't always the best. And then I think one of the other parts of it, um, particularly where how it all kind of ties in, is this virus. Um, and one of the things that it does is it feeds on or it works best. It's most efficient as in its spreading when people are densely populated. And if you start thinking about those cities I named, you know, where black people live and black people live in close quarters, close quarters where black people share the elevator going up and down in, you know, some um, either a project or apartment building where black people are touching doors that other people are touching, et cetera. You know, it has the potential to jump from person to person um, a lot easier. And, you, you know, if you look in the news, I think there's there are eight, nine states that have not um, created a, a stay, uh, a shelter in place order or whatever the case may be. And most of them are like Wyoming, Montana, the South and North Dakota, et cetera. And you think about, you know, they, they, you know, they may not need to, to be honest, you know, I think everyone, everybody should, but do they have to considering that, you know, they live in places where their neighbor might be, you know, a half a mile away. They live on three acre farms and you know, it's a different type of living. And so they very well may not have um, just dense population and not may not have. They don't have dense population urban centers where you where you bump into people a lot like a New York City or like a Los Angeles. So there's there's a lot in how we live. Um, that uh, has to do with this virus and, and its ability to spread. And you mentioned some really good stuff that, you know, if you're diabetic or you, if your immune system is compromised in any way, then it, it can really affect you. So yeah, that's an important, those were very important points. Lamont? Well, that was like deep. I, I think it went a little bit to the left, but I, I was a little confused. But, but here's my thing. And Maynard, here's my thing is that there's a, what do they call it? Wealth inequality gap. And I was looking at from where it was from 1970 to today. And actually the, the, the gap has grown. Um, and I think it's, it's by design and, and Spud, when you say, what can we do? I think a, it's a lot of things that I think that are small, but, but I, I think make a, a, a very large impact is that our community 
is sometimes charged for goods and services that are like different than outside of our community. So if you start something as basic as that, if you have a hundred dollars, but in the city of Detroit, it's going to cost you forty dollars to get water, and if you have three hundred dollars and you're in Bloomfield, it only costs twenty five dollars to get water. Like it's, it's small stuff like that. Like I was I was watching something on one of those Netflix specials when they talked about the history of redlining oh and why they call why they why they called it redlining. Like the green part was, you know, that was for the good and that was for you know who. And then the red part was like, no, we can't sell to these people. This is the red part. You can't and that's allegedly where redlining comes from. And I think just on so many different levels, man, from insurance to you know, to certain things that, you know, water, utilities. I mean, I think those things are really, really real, you know? And I think on a smaller level, that, you know, plays a very large part. And I say this all the time. I couldn't understand when I came to New Jersey where, yes, a lot of things are more expensive, but what we pay for water in comparison to what an average city of Detroit pays for water, it just makes no sense. It's like five to six times more. You know what I mean? Like, uh-huh. what? And again, that's basic. You know, and we can go into a whole lot of other deepness, but it's like, it, it's part of a system, Spud, and I don't know how do you go in and blow up that system to whether that's not the case, because I don't think it's education. I don't think it's, 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 it's you know, modifying your spending habits. I think it's something much bigger and greater than that that needs to be addressed. I ain't got you the answer. You don't think it's behavior? You don't think it's behavior? I think that could be part of it. Part but of I mean, it. again, mm-hmm. if you already have a family, like, and I forgot the stack because I was looking at it as you were saying it, it said, again, that if that white family had $100, the black family only had $55. So, yes, if you already have 55 and you're spending, you know, 12 bucks on the belt, you know, a Hermes belt, and these are all in whatever terms, Yes, but there's still an inequality because you are whatever it is you do. If you do a perfect everything, you're only going to have 55, and that white suburban family is going to have a hundred. Right. There are some, period. There are some. There are some behaviors that need to be corrected, but they're all. But I, I think when we talk about personal accountability, we we need to obviously, like you said, Lamont, we have to talk about the systemic issues that put you in positions where you ha- almost have to make horrible decisions. You know, you have to, you know, don't push me because I'm close to the edge. You know what I'm saying? that, And that's how a lot of people, they're, you know, that's the the life that they happen to be living. Not for any reason. Like a child is born into a, into a family where the family isn't winning. The family has been, is you know, that's not that child's fault. And what do you do? Give away the child. Yeah. So. So, 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 so let me say this. And this according to the New York Times in 2015 which is five years ago. This ain't even about no pandemic, whatever. It says, for every $100 in a white family wealth category, the black family has just $5.04. Come on, man. And what you're not going to tell me is that that black family or... I, I, you got to be careful with the minority word because me and, and we got to talk about this on the next podcast because me and me and a programmer, we were talking about the origins of the word minority and how we use it today and what it really is. We'll get to that later. But it's like, yo, it's a large gap, bro. And we got to work on the gap as well as the spending habits. We do. But we have to acknowledge the gap because there is one. Well, speaking of spending habits, we got a new sponsor on the show, and we're going to go ahead and let him spend some of that money right here on this ad. Right now, social media is the number one way to reach people, and Hype Voice Creative can help you grow your business or podcast with social media marketing. Hype Voice Creative is a full-service creative agency that produces commercials for every business, from concerts, restaurants, attorneys, tax companies, real estate agents, motivational speakers, filmmakers, podcasters, and even radio stations. Hype Voice has the creativity to make your content stand out, be seen, and be heard. Ready to start a podcast and need somebody to help you produce it? Hype Voice Creative can help you produce your podcast in no time. See their work at HypeVoiceCreative.com. That's H-Y-P-E-V-O-I-C-E.com. Then give them a call and let them create content for your business so you can stand out on social media, TV, or radio at 248-513-6006. That's 248-513-6006. And now 
Back to the show. Another check that ain't cleared just yet, but we going we gonna to wait on that. Hey, man, why are you putting in the streets that these checks is not clearing? Oh, I don't man. know if I'm agreeing with that. Come on, man. Let's not do that. Let's not do that. Yo, uh, I think it's, it's it, we've arrived at my, my favorite time of the week, the time when I get to talk about what's on my mind, and I just want to let you all know it's time for the cactus. You're welcome to dine on our finest cactus. <laughs> <laughs> this week, do, gentlemen, do you know what Tybee Island is? No. Tybee Island is one of Georgia's most popular vacation destinations. And lots of people co- go there. The town depends on beach goers. It's got a beach in it. It's, it's an island. Um, you know, so the city council of that community back in March decided they were going to close down Tybee Island uh, because they didn't want coronavirus to spread. And I think everybody would agree that, you know, if we can hold off 30 days, 60, 90 days, even if it hurts, even if the city council, whose job it is, is to grow money for the community and that the beach is the primary, you know, growth uh, source for their community, uh, income source for their community, Mayor Shirley Sessions decided that, listen, I have to shut it down because it's in the interest of the community's health. But some bright, well-intentioned, super smart, possibly even a good-looking white governor named Brian Kemp decided he was going to issue his statewide executive order to close the state in many areas. However, he decided to reopen the state beaches, Tybee Island being one of them. Brian Kemp You're an idiot. Right now, we know that being able to create social distancing and being able to stay at home and stay off the streets, stay off the beach, these are the things that are going to help us blunt the the curve and start to level out what's going on and make this thing, this coronavirus thing, um, slow it down and go a different direction. In addition to that, you must be some kind of idiot if you said that you had no idea that asymptomatic people could carry the disease or carry the virus and pass it on to other people. You, uh, you, you said this just last week. Oh, I didn't know. But the CDC had issued that as a warning several weeks ago. And the reason why I say you're an idiot is not because everybody is supposed to know. But the CDC is in Atlanta, you idiot. You are the governor of Georgia. You essentially are the CDC's landlord, if you will. And you didn't know? I knew that. I'm sure that Spud and Lamont knew that. My 10-year-old daughter knew that. And your idiot ass decides, I'm not only going to ignore the CDC, who happens to be in my state, who I probably know many of the people who work there because, you know, it's a large governmental agency and whatnot, and I'm the governor, but also I'm going to reopen the beach where people are going to go and gather and people are going to be enticed to spend time together and bump into people and meet people that they may or may not know and they may or not know if they're carrying the virus. This week... Governor Kemp, Governor Brian P. Kemp, who was the Secretary of State for the state of of Georgia, and I think he probably did rig the election, you get this week's cactus. And for that, sir, I hope you choke on some cactus. Yo, um, I wanted to, you know, my check ain't cleared either yet, but I do want to say that if uh, someone has a need for a a loudmouth, smart, person who comes on and talks uh, as a political humorist a um a social activist and some and and part-time jerk you can always reach out to my booking agent her name is anita randall and you can reach her at anita.randall at yahoo.com and uh you know I don't do bar mitzvahs, but I will absolutely show up and spend time with your business and discuss marketing uh politics podcasting etc you know, Anita Randall, anita.randall at yahoo.com, the booking agent. Y'all, you might want to get y'all a booking agent. Any last words, gentlemen? Uh, uh. no. <laughs> uh, no, I don't have any last words. I was trying to think if I had any last words, but I don't. 
Lamont, I'm well, certain I, you have something to say. Yeah, of course. You know, and I, actually, I messed up. Because where we at on time? We are good? We're at 50. We got 30 seconds, Lamont. Man, shout, shout out to all of the ones that have passed, man, from this virus. Oh, yeah, no doubt. No doubt. You know what right. Shout we, out we, to all the ones that are recovering as well. Yeah, right. that's you know. real. Yeah, shout out to anybody who's care. You know what? What we're going to go over just a second. I'm sorry. Shout out to the first responders and the nurses and the doctors out here putting it in because you know they they are doing a hell of a job trying to keep us safe. Not the doctors and you know what I'm saying the first responders that's on the damn in- Instagram doing the <laughs> I'm in my uniform and then I turn into you know what I'm saying the nightclub chick. Not those ones. Not, What's wrong with that? that? What's wrong no. with that? No, sit y'all asses down. <laughs> sit y'all asses down. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just... Shout out to y'all too, but sit y'all ass down somewhere. <laughs> Yo, we'll do it again next week. Please, like Spud says, like us, follow us, share this podcast with somebody, and we'll grow and keep doing what we do. Peace. This episode of Three Black Guys with the Mic was produced by Herbcaster Media and sponsored by BWPMarketing.com and HypeVoice.com. For speaking engagements, bookings, or any other media inquiries, send us an email at sir at threeblackguyswiththemic.com. That's S-I-R at threeblackguyswiththemic.com. We're available for all interviews, including politics, music, the urban community, or any topic you want to discuss. Have a podcast? Invite us on your show. We love to be a part. Just send us an email. At sir at three black guys with the mic dot com. That's sir at three black guys with the mic dot com.